Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you how to paint the part three of our uh, three-part series of um, floral impressionist with the enamel jugs, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of a shabby chic look. I, I'm really liking how these are turning out, kind of neutral backgrounds and kind of just a pop of color with the flowers, but still pretty pastel overall and I'm keeping them fairly simple for beginners so I'll show you step by step how to do it all the way through from start to finish and I've got my spin mark with me hey there everybody he's man in chat for this live show so if you've got questions while we're painting I'll try to answer them so let's get started all right so this is uh, like I said the third part I did the first two here this was the first one and that opening picture there second one and then the third one is gonna be right here and I don't have the picture printed out for you sorry I couldn't get my printer to work this morning so whatever it was causing issues <clears throat> got I'm using a 12 by 12 inch uh, mixed media plain air board but you can use any size you'd like uh, I liked the square uh, size because it kind of fit when I cropped these images. Uh, they worked kind of an, on a square canvas, but you could put them all on one canvas if, if you wanted even. So let me go over our palette really quick with you. I know, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unbleached titanium, titanium white. Quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, phthalo green blue shade this time. Uh, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. If you don't have the blue shade of uh, phthalo green, just use the um, yellow shade. That's fine. You can just add a little bit of yellow to this color to get something similar to this. Or add a little bit of blue, I mean, phthalo blue, to get that color. All right. Uh, let me draw it out for you really quick. I'm just going to grab a little bit of chalk here. Or you can use a water-soluble pencil, whatever you've got. And I already went ahead and kind of pre-marked um, from the other canvases so I could get this uh, exactly straight. But you're just going to want to mark across. You can use a T-square if you want to or something that makes sure that you have a straight line. Just mark your line there for the background. And I kind of left a gap here where I want my vase to, to fit in. It is going to be, if you mark this in the center, this little one is going to be, this little jug, uh, mug, whatever it is, is going to be just below, maybe a quarter inch below that line. And um, let me see. So if you take that, yeah, it's about well, three inches maybe. Maybe not quite three. We're not going quite to the center line. So we're just, just inside the center line. And we're going to just do a little angle up on either side like that. And our center mark is right here. So we're gonna end well below that, about an inch below we're going to, this one is our, our little baby one of the bunch. It's a lot smaller than the other two pictures. So it's gonna be right about there. It's kind of more like a mug size. Uh, and then I couldn't see the handle in the picture. It was kind of um, fuzzy, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a little handle right here. Just a little one. And then this is the spout right here. Okay, so there we is go. Is it a teapot? Kind of. I don't know. It's oh, there's a handle and there's a spout. <laughs> tip it over. See if it shouts? <laughs> no? Okay. Good. That was good. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got to stay on your toes. I know. I know. Wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no one expects the little teapot. <laughs> I'm going to use... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to use my number 12 bright. Uh, I wanted to say thank you also to our canvas sponsor, Fredericks, and our brush sponsor, uh, Princeton. They're wonderful companies, and we enjoy working with them. Um, so our brushes today, we're going to be using the 12 bright, the number 8 bright, 
and then the number for Filbert in the 6100 series. And then the Velvet Touch series, we've got a quarter inch and a three eighths inch angle. And then with the Select series, and these are all Princeton, I've got the number one liner and the 10 aught bristle fan brush for our splatters. So let's start out with the largest one. We've got the number 12 bright, and we're just going to do our background really quick. Here I'm going to use this unbleached titanium and some white. We'll start with that. And we'll add just a little bit of gray around the teapot or whatever it is. Now you got me saying it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm going to say it's an old water pitcher. Water pitcher, yeah. Okay. That's cute, whatever it is. I am just slapping this paint on here, getting it on quickly, picking up water in between. Every time I pick up a little bit of paint, I'm also picking up water. That keeps my brush hydrated. You could also spray down your canvas a little bit. That helps kind of the paint to um, move around the canvas. doesn't kind of like get stuck. Usually on like a really dry canvas, the first time you use it, uh, it can be really um, tacky, almost like not tacky, but uh, very highly textured. And um, can be hard for the paint to move around. It'll really absorb and suck in all of the moisture out of your paints. And so if you don't keep adding water every now and then, you might show the brush, the water thing there, huh? I'm talking about, or not. What are you laughing at? What do you want to see? I wanted the water can. And you got it. Thank you. I wasn't paying attention. I know. So. <laughs> could you tell? Yeah, I could tell. Oh, okay. Just, I thought I was being very discreet about it. Uh-huh. The M&M's gave you away. <laughs> the, grabbing a handful. Mm. <laughs> Chomping on them over That's there. my lunch. I know. I know. I can't complain. You were doing the the yard long. earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to pull in from the outside here. I just don't want to... That color bleeds a little bit. You can kind of see what happens when you touch it onto that water-soluble pencil, so I don't want it to get into my clean, clean paint out here. So I'm just going to kind of pull over it this way. It blended a little bit there, but that's all right. All right, and then I'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber and uh, ultramarine blue for my foreground here. We're also going to use more unbleached titanium to soften it up. Just create kind of a soft gray. I'm going to add a little bit more brown to make a little bit more of a brownish gray. And we'll just put that on. It might be a little bit too dark still. Let's grab a little white. There we go. You're using the edge of my brush can get me, whoop, just flipped out on there. last time too. <laughs> Dang it. I didn't learn. <sighs> so when will the pro version of this video be out? I don't know. You want me to give it a try? See? Yeah, you might be able to do better at this point. Okay. Getting on. Just trying to go around that mug so that I don't have to try to paint around it later. Well, I got this on my brush. Just 
It might be a little bit dark, but we'll see. So I want to say thank you for stopping by and watching today with us. If you're new to our channel, we hope you will subscribe and come back. We do these once, once a week on Saturdays and then, <clears throat> well, twice a week. Once on Saturdays and once on Thursdays, Tuesdays. Tuesdays and Saturdays. 6 p.m. on Tuesdays and 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Central. So, it's a lot of fun. Try to show you how to paint with acrylics. I've been painting for about 30 years now. And um, I started this channel kind of mostly thinking that maybe teachers would want to watch. Honestly, I wasn't really thinking about um, reaching out to my own students. So I was just thinking, well, you know, maybe some, I was doing some kids projects, kids classes. I thought maybe some teachers would see it and enjoy, but now it's kind of turned into my own little thing. Kind of took over my whole art career, <laughs> <laughs> which is wonderful. We've met all kinds of people from all over the world. It's been yep. amazing. So I'm adding a little bit of the unbleached titanium here and I'm just going to kind of blend in this darker color kind of behind the vase and just a little bit into our background just kind of doing these little x strokes pick up a little bit of water every now and then so that my brush is not going to get too dry if you start to see it kind of doing this sort of dry brush thing where it um it breaks up the line doesn't you know isn't solid then you know that you need to add a little bit of water that's all that means so I'm just gonna Ain't no big deal. Nope. Just a little bit of water. And that's just standard North American tap water. Yep. Nothing Fancy. special. No, I mean, they, you know, the paint companies will say that you should use uh, distilled water, I think it is, or something, you know, that's uh, because the if you're in a, like a area that's very highly your water is very highly mineralized. It can change the color, you know, just kind of like how it does your laundry and stuff, you know, turn it more rusty color or whatever. So if you have that in your area, you might want to use filtered water, but um, we don't have an issue with that in our area. So I think we're, I don't usually see any kind of color shift from the, using our waters. All right, so there we go. Because we could, you know, probably bottle some up and sell it as, <laughs> Angela's art water be like so that's the thing yeah about 15 20 dollars a gallon it's, uh, I'm sure somebody's thought of that I'm sure somewhere <laughs> special art water that's hilarious I was thinking of some marketing schemes mm -hmm. you just want to retire earlier is what you're thinking yeah you yeah. know I'll just get the garden hose and <laughs> start filling up water bottles fill up some old milk jugs and you're getting white here and I'm just setting that in no. Get the Sharpie out. <laughs> Angela's art water. You're, it's going to be a professional thing I can see already. <laughs> oh, made. Yeah. All right, I'm going to let you take... Well, actually, I'm going to... I'll go ahead and work on this. I think I can do this vase, hopefully. Or the pitcher or whatever. Um, while the rest of this is drying, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to use white on this. Let's fill this in. Now if you're needing to rest your arm on the painting, you can kind of use your fist underneath to rest it just above. That way it doesn't touch the canvas. out that water the brush don't let me forget my brush sitting here with paint and I'll just stick it in my water for now I picked up a little bit of water a little bit more white and painting around this make this a whole lot easier and then you don't have to 
try to cover this color, which is pretty dark, this background color. So painting around it going to help this go a little bit faster. I won't have to do so many coats. And then once we've got that on there, I'm going to grab a little bit of my ultramarine blue and a little bit of that gray uh, brown burnt umber and make that gray color, right? And we're going to pull it through that wet paint right along that edge. And I don't mind if it streaks a little bit. Just kind of want that darker color to be right along that outside edge. bottom edge can I add a little color there then I'm going to do the same thing and I'm actually kind of just grabbing it on the one side kind of on the corner of my brush that way I'm leaving this side a little bit lighter and I'll turn it so that that dark color is right along that edge that will give it a little bit more of a shading look called double loading And just blend it out. If that white, if that white is wet underneath, so it's helping this color to kind of just blend in really easily. If it starts feeling sticky, then you need to let your wet, your water, um, your white dry all the way, and then you can still do this. You just have more white on this side so that it blends a little bit. All right. So I'm going to give a shout out to a co-worker in France. Oh, okay. Who's watching live right now. Really? So shout out to Matu. Nice. Hi, Matu. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What time is it there? Oh, seven hours later than here. So what? About nine. Very 9 good. 30. Very cool. All right, I'm using the burnt umber here. I'm just going to tap along that bottom edge. Well, now I gotta make you look good, hon. So. I know. Don't mess up. <laughs> Could be the end of my other career. <laughs> <laughs> Never be able to look them in the face at work again, in the eye at work again. Okay, I'm going to use the corner of my brush here and just kind of add a little bit of rust to the bottom of this. So just kind of using that corner edge and just do some random stippling here. Tap, tap, tap. And then I'm going to do a little bit up here. It looks like there's a little bit around the rim. There's kind of like a little lip right under the top there and I have no idea what's going on with this because there's it's all covered up so I'm just going to kind of tap a little bit of this around the joints that's kind of usually where they kind of rust or show some wear and then let's do a little bit over here let's pretend there's some on this handle here which we haven't painted in yet we'll go ahead and do that right now white. Do a little bit of white at the top here. This is kind of a big brush to do this, so if you want to, you can switch to a smaller brush. Just kind of using the edge of it to get some color on there. There we go. So you'll need to be careful with the leaning in. Oh, am I? Is my hair? While, every once in a while we're getting a hair shot. Are we? To just in the oh, bottom no. corner. <laughs> okay. And I didn't really do anything with my hair today, so it looks pretty bad. Mm, I didn't see any bugs, so we're okay. Okay, well, good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> at least I, at least I uh, pinned it out of the way, so it's not as bad as it could be. could have been worse. All right. I'm cleaning out my brush here. Just getting it got a new thing that I'm trying out. It's like a little paint puck. 
thing, but it's moving around in my jar, so I what? didn't get it on there. It's supposed to like allow you to paint puck. clean your brush out a little bit easier, but it's not sticking very well. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to try it a few times and see if we want to add it to our YouTube or our Amazon store. Nice. I like it. So, um, let's go ahead and have you uh, dry this. Let me see. I can go ahead and add a little bit to the bottom here while it's still wet. This, this brown color that we were using up here on the vase, I'm just going to use it right along the border of the top. Oop. I was right off camera. I didn't even know. Right there, I've added a little bit of water to it, so it's kind of it. It's actually picking up that color, so it's too early. It's not dry enough yet. Well, let me try it. Okay, I'm gonna let you dry it. I'm gonna do it right here real quick, and then I'll let you take that. Dry it real quick. Thank you, hon. Mm -hmm. All right, now for the part mark legs. I'm just show him. Yeah, I know. He know, he always misses it. This is his creation, the stick man. We're gonna add some yellow flowers to it. We've got a vase going here from the pitcher. We add something to stick man every week. Well, whenever I remember. It kind of goes along with whatever it is we're painting that week. So, Mark starts the stick man, and I add to him very quickly while he's blow drying. So he's almost full. We're going to have to get Mark to do another one soon. I think this is 4.0 maybe, fourth or fifth one. I don't know. I can't, haven't kept track there, over there somewhere. So, kind of fun. All right. Let me clean out my brushes while I'm waiting for him. One thing about brushes is, um, you know, I'm, I am very um, convinced that a good brush will make your painting experience easier, but you do have to take care of them. So if you leave them in your water um, while you're painting, they can crack, and I have a ton of them that have cracked already. I use tape on them, but this part, what happens is the water seeps down into the silver part, and then it swells, and this middle part here is just wood, like the handle is wood that's covered with paint, and the wood swells, and it cracks the paint, and then it chips off and flakes off, and you have a big mess. So taping it as soon as you see it split um, will help keep kind of hold it together and keep it from splitting all the way down um, but uh, the best thing is to just not let it do that so try to keep your uh, paints brushes clean in between when you're using them stop every now and then to just clean them out really well fully clean them and uh, they'll last a long time for you and then use good soap and uh, like a light um, dawn liquid or something like that that's light gentle um, to wash them out. I made you an espresso while I was out too. Did you? Yep, here you go. No, thank you. Oh, so do you mind if I drink it? No, go for it. <laughs> okay. I know, we move this camera right, it's like my forehead is here, literally this far away from my forehead. About two, three inches. Yeah. <laughs> So there's no wonder that I'm <laughs> putting my face down in it. Uh, we did it so it was kind of tilting the way because it was tilting towards me and we weren't able to get the whole canvas on there. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. So I'm going to, that's fine. That's good. And then I'm going to sketch on here. Yeah, well, I don't know. We still need to work on it because it's still kind of not quite right. But it's getting better. All right. So we're going to have um, a little bit smaller obviously, because it's a smaller vase. We've got one big daisy kind of coming up right here in that area. And we've got a big pink blossom here, another one kind of coming off right here. Actually, let's move this over. One here, we've got one kind of coming down like that. So we'll move this pink one down here so it's not quite touching this one. We've got I have a purpley daisy looking thing there. Some more daisies up here. I want to 
make sure I am getting them at different heights. And there's a big yellow one right off here, right off the handle. There. Another daisy here. Smaller daisies here, here, here. And then a long trailing vine that comes out that way. And then this leaf kind of covers over the spout, so if you don't want to cover it completely, you can kind of put it down here. Okay, so I'm just using regular ch school chalk. This will wash off when we start painting, but just give us a good starting point. All right, so let's use our green, and I'm going to add a little bit of purple to it. Let's just make a really deep, deep color really pretty color with our flowers and I am going to use this to create our greenery right up from the edge of the jug mug whatever <laughs> sorry that was my outdoor voice <laughs> okay what you were doing there to be honest, me either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just felt good to do that. All right, do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Were you out in the sun too long today, honey? Maybe a little heat stroke, I don't know. <laughs> All right. We're just wanting to get a really dark uh, contrast. So that our, when our, we put our flowers and our other greenery on top, we've got something really, really dark in the background there that will give us some good contrast. If you look at our, go ahead and put up the reference image there, hon. Um, if you look at the, you know, the middle part right above the mug in between these two large flowers here, you've got almost, it's almost black down in here. So that's what we're trying to get in right now. It's just this really dark area for our flowers to kind of play against. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow oxide down here. Press my brush nice and flat. I'm gonna put in a few stems, so I'm just going to kind of use that edge of the brush to draw in. That might be too thick. I'll use a smaller brush. So let's put in some leaves instead. And some rough leaf shapes. This is very stylistic. We're not trying to make this super realistic. This is a whole different lesson. So this is very like just kind of trying to look at the overall shapes that we're seeing and put those in. Uh, get the get the values correct. You know, get the light and darks correct. But we can really play with the shapes and the move things around. Um, that's one of the things that I really like about this kind of art. It's good for beginners because it's not as threatening, I think, uh, as like a you know, true realism because you can kind of play with the play with the shapes a little bit. There's a lot more um, freedom, a little bit more wiggle room for self-expression. So... All right, let's grab a little bit of the yellow. We're gonna make a brighter green this time. Still wanna keep it fairly dark, so if we need to, we can add a little bit of burnt umber here. And I really haven't cleaned out my brush. I still have all these other colors on here, but that's okay. They're just adding to the story. So let's add some leaves right here, big one. And I kind of like that little spout. I kind of hate to cover it up, but it is covered in my picture, so maybe I'll do it this way. Okay, so again, we're going kind of with the darker colors first, and we'll add our lighter colors on top, but I'm going to go ahead and put in a few of these this darker leaves here this is all just kind of our background we're just looking at kind of what we're seeing underneath and behind 
um, our flowers, um, anything that's covering over the top of our flowers we're going to save for later. So we'll just look at that first and that's what I'm putting in now. And I want to define these a little bit better that's in them than it's in my picture so I'm going to kind of separate those out a little bit. Right there. Got some smaller leaf shapes through here. I'm just setting my brush down and kind of pulling it to the center to get some of those. Let me use this brush. This is my quarter inch angle. This will give me a better line. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my green here. This is that brighter green. And I'm going to use the edge of it. It's pressed nice and flat, so we've got a nice straight edge here. You can also use the liner brush for this if you don't want to use the angle brush. It's whatever you're feeling comfortable with. And I'm going to create my curved line for my little leaf shapes. And let's go ahead and, while we've got this, we'll put in our stems for our some of our other flowers too. So. use this again, this one again. I can put in some of my leaf shapes. What are you laughing about? So our Dom, our mod Dom, her uh, her little boy AJ is with her while she's watching, uh -huh. and she has some very interesting chat going on right now because uh -oh. he's helping her. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> trying to decide if I need to block her or not. I mean, I don't know. Some of this stuff is. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> shapes here trailing off I'm just going to kind of obscure the outline of this so that it's got some different things going on so it doesn't look like an abrupt end of our greenery there maybe put I think we're good for now. We'll leave that. I can always add more later. <clears throat> Clean that out really well. Clean out my angle brush too, so it's not staying in the water. And then we're going to go ahead and put in our big, big flowers here. So I'm going to grab the Quinacridone magenta. And some of these, some of the cadmium yellow, and some unbleached titanium. We'll make kind of a soft peachy pink color. Add some white to it. We'll use this darker color first, and we're just going to put in some color in the middle of our flower there we can cover over the greenery that we put in there if any of it's kind of overlapping where we don't want it. Okay. Just go ahead and let that set. There's another one over here so we'll go and put that one in. That one's kind of facing away from us a little bit. So we're seeing it from the side so it's kind of a cup shape almost.
And I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to start defining the outline of this flower. And I'm wanting to have it, I don't want it to be a circle. So I want to create some irregular edges. Going really, really light here. So it's almost white, but not quite. It's got a little bit of this pink in it. And our center is going to be right here. So we're going to kind of cup around it a little bit. Leave that part dark. And then I'm going to do these smaller little petals just kind of going around it in a sort of semicircle fashion. Just like that. Don't over don't overdo it. Like you really don't need a whole lot of detail here. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of burnt umber, my quinacridone magenta. Go a little bit darker in here. Burnt umber just kind of neutralizes it, so it's not like a candy pink. It gives a little bit more of a neutral undertone. Wipe that off my brush, pick up a little bit of white, use it on my petals that are out here. And take the white from the outside in. I've added some of that dark color right there where it kind of attaches and we'll just add some of this lighter color along the outside edge where it's catching the light. There we go. A little bit more white and I'm just going to go back in and add just a little. I may have to let that dry. It's just blending. Alright, so let's grab some. We'll do our yellow flower. So I'm going to grab some of this green and yellow oxide to it. This is this leaf green here. I'm going to use it for. I'm going to grab a little bit of brown, burnt umber too. I want to like a green gray color. It's good. It's going to look kind of ugly at first, so just going to trust it. We'll get it looking good. But this area down here is pretty dark. And yellow, really, the values are not all that deep, so you don't need to go super, super dark. But you do want a little bit of contrast for our lighter colors that are going to come on top. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the Conacridone Magenta and my yellow oxide. I'm going to make a orange color. I'm going to add some of the yellow or cadmium yellow light. Brighten it up just a little bit. And we're going to add a little bit of that in here too. So that'll kind of go along here. It's not going to look like a whole lot yet. I'm keeping away from the brightest part which is the center. And I'm going to go ahead and go in with the cadmium yellow light or cadmium yellow medium with this part here and kind of define that outside edges of my flower just a little bit. It looks like my finished flower. <laughs> this is kind of how you would do it. Huh? Yeah, a little more muddy though. A little more muddy? Okay. Yeah. I'll work on that. Thanks. use this color. We'll define some of our daisy centers. So we're going to have one up here. I'm just going to kind of set my brush down sideways. Smush it down. Let's get some of these daisies in here.
Okay, and then there's kind of a, I'm not sure, I think it's kind of a columbine or something. There's flower here. I have kind of a spiky. Spiky pink things coming off the end of it there. So we'll do that. I know, technical. It's getting a little, you know, mm -hmm. might be too high art for you, honey. It is. Yeah. I'm just, you know. <laughs> Little spiky thing. I'm glad I wasn't in, in charge of naming things when they were created. <laughs> spiky pink things. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you know me. I'm my words. It's, gonna, it's as good as it gets here. <laughs> I'd just be glad I'm using words at all. Yeah, I'm glad that you're a reader. <laughs> it shows. Then it would be really bad, wouldn't it? <sighs> so is it like Cat in the Hat? Is that what you're <laughs> reading? <laughs> That's good. That's good. I could have added white to much. my yellow hair. And we're going to go in on top here and add our highlights. So we're kind of, this one's kind of facing that way. So we're seeing the tops of some of these petals not... leaving some of that dark color showing so that way we'll have a little bit of contrast and like I did before I'm kind of wanting to uh, work those edges so that I don't have too much of the sameness it's not a not a perfect circle or anything we want some regular edges and then as I get towards the center here I'm going to there's really not a whole lot of detail in our picture is there I can't really tell what it looks like so I'm just gonna kind of kind of guess there And if we want to, we can use a little bit of that yellow and kind of pull back this way to kind of blend over the top of some of those. Give them a little bit more definition, a little bit of detail, just to kind of set them into the flower a little bit so they're not looking like they're floating on top. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of bright, bright white. We'll see. I may not. I may want to add more of the dark color in there, even though it's not in my picture. It's still. It's kind of bugging me a little bit. So we'll see when we get farther along if we want to mess with it anymore. So let's go ahead and use this yellow. Grab a, grab a little bit of this green. We're gonna put some of our yellow leaves in. And I haven't really fully blended my color out, so I'm getting kind of streaks of green and yellow, which is what I wanted. Kind of overlapping. Grab a little bit more of the. Spray that with some water. A little bit more of this bright green here. There we go. Add 
add some streaks into these. If we need to, you can you can uh, attach them to something if they need to be attached to a stem. You could draw in the stem if you need to. I'm trying to kind of just overlap mine a little bit. So okay. I, know, I know you said hi to everybody earlier. Yes, I did. Did we talk about the uh, supply list down below? I did not. Oh. Well, if you're watching first time, hey, give us a thumbs up. I see everybody out there watching. Well, not literally. We're not that creepy. <laughs> but, you know, you know what I mean. All right. <laughs> Anyways, if you're new to the channel, there's down below the video. There's a list of all the supplies that Angel is using and links to an Amazon store. To, and she has a lot of those supplies in there. Also the brush guys uh, for the brushes that she's using in a list. There's a link down there too, 5% off with Angela Fine Art. Mm -hmm. And then she's got the links to her social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, Pinterest, and then of course, Patreon, where yes. you can support the channel that way. Uh, there's a dollar a month level for the traceables. So, if, you know, the day or if you draw days, like Mark, if you draw like me, <laughs> you need traceables. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so, you just don't want to draw. And that's true. Hey, yeah. and there's no shame in that. Not at all. So that's what they're for. Painting and drawing, totally yeah. different. Yeah, so totally it's different things. All the traceables going back to February 2017 are in there, as many downloads as you want. And then the five dollar level month is includes the traceables plus a link to okay. a these are just getting bigger. Sorry, go a, ahead. A bonus YouTube video that she does once a month, and on a on a private link. And then the ten dollar level, you get all that plus also access to a Facebook group where uh, she does additional teachings and runs polls. We're and working on like this. That. What? So we're going to be working on that all month in my Facebook group for the Patreon folks. So we drew it out yesterday Holy no moly. Friday, uh, Thursdays yeah that took two hours over two hours <laughs> you didn't learn anything from that other video did you <laughs> no no I didn't so it's going to be a long one that may be a two month job I don't know we'll see <laughs> so yeah it's a good way to uh, stuff going on to support the channel in a small way and get some stuff back yeah. and uh, I'm about ready to get that million dollar level set up for you Bill <laughs> so just hang in there it's almost there I don't think he's watching hun. I think what do you mean he's not watching I think his people would have contacted our people who, who is our hmm. people you I mean, we, <laughs> I mean we use Microsoft products so I think that is it's true it's true but we didn't buy a Apparently Tesla he's in the lighter color no maybe we can get a get a sponsorship we can get a Tesla for the company car. Yeah. Okay. You work on that. Okay. Elon, give me a ring. What? Just Elon, give you a ring? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't listen to him, guys. <laughs> Fine. I am. You won't get to ride in my company car. <laughs> All right, just adding some light colors to our leaves here, kind of adding a medium color, sort of tone it down. That was kind of a little bit bright there. So just adding a little bit of detail. I really don't want to go too, too far with this, but I felt like it needed a little something something. here, the big leaves at least. And just add a little bit of streaking along the edge to kind of bring out maybe the high points of the leaf. Okay. Just 
good so far. And then I want to use some of that quinacridone magenta and some purple. We're going to make a violet color. And I'm going to add white to it. I'll grab a little bit of white, just bring it over here to a clean spot. That's pretty good. Adding white will help you see kind of what the undertones are. It's kind of hard to see when you're mixing a dark color, sort of what it's going to look like. So if you add just a touch of white, you'll be able to tell a little bit better. Okay, so let's just go ahead and put in our pink daisies. Or, yeah, I guess, I don't know what these are. I think they're daisies. There's a big one right up here somewhere. Let's see. Let's do it right here. I'm going to add the lighter color over the top. I'm kind of sort of doing a fan shape with this. So it's kind of fanning out like that. I'm just going to go ahead and cover up that green all the way because it was looking weird. All right, and then I'm going to grab that purple and do the underside petals. Wipe that off, get that darker color. There we go. <clears throat> Grab a little green, do a little green kind of cap underneath, and give it a little stem. All right. Let's do a little bit of the lighter color on this one. This one we're only seeing the bo bottom of it. So it's not as detailed. Actually really need to overlap those a little bit better. green at the bottom. Maybe add a little white. Make that visible. There we go. Let's get a little bit of white on that one too. I did some burnt umber there with my green just to kind of darken it up just a little bit. Okay, so we've got a couple of those. Let's do one more right here. Pull. Poking in there, peeking out. <coughs> Is it in the shot again? I can't, I can't even see it. Is it down here? When I'm leaning to the no. side? And now lean in. Ah, I see it. <laughs> yeah, you can see how well I combed my hair today. I can see it. Sticking out. All right. I'll try to stay out of the shot. Yeah, come on. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to need a different brush. I'm going to grab a number two round here for my daisies. I do that I'm going to grab some of the green and some yellow and I'm going to add some details to these leaves here just add a little bit of that dark green just feel like they don't have enough contrast there there we go just kind of tapping some green dark green on them I feel like there's some stuff down here that we didn't do, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in right now. I'm going to grab some burnt umber, add some stems out this way. I've got a question. Yes. So um, if somebody wants to do something other than the pink flower, yeah. What would be a good color to go with? You know, keep the same shape, but maybe change up the color. You could do white if you wanted to keep it more neutral. Um, any of the colors that we've got going on in our palette, you can just mix and match those, you know, and create your own color story. As long as you use the same colors, um, you can pretty much do whatever you'd like. There's, you know, by, by using the same colors, it kind of creates that sort of unity in your painting. So, these are little rosebuds, I think. I don't know if that helped answer anything, but... I think it did. Okay, good. I mean, I was going to say like black, but <laughs> I knew that wasn't right. You knew that wasn't right? Okay. Right. Good deal. Let's go ahead and put in our end of this one. There's some sort of stuff going on the back end of that. Flower. Yeah, I feel like these could be a little bit darker now that they've dried. I can see that they need a little bit more contrast. I'm going to go ahead and grab some yellow oxide and some cadmium yellow medium. A little tiny bit of the yellow or the green there. I'm just going to use a little bit of it in here to kind of darken up that area. Kind of help bring that out a little bit. Let's use a little bit of white with that yellow. And tap in on our daisy centers. A little bit of brightness. some cadmium yellow and tap that in also. And then use a little bit of that with the white, cadmium yellow and a little bit of white to highlight the centers of these. Columbine or whatever they are. Let's add some quinacridone magenta to that. Bright salmon pink color. I'm going to add 
little spikes around this and going down. Like that. Cool. Yeah. A few up and then just a couple of them kind of up over the pink and then the rest of them kind of fall back down. There's a lot going on in this one. It's kind of hard to see in there, but they're they're all in there. They're kind of blurry, so it's sort of hard to make out what's happening, but I'm trying to... I didn't really realize when when I picked this... This is a photograph from Shutterstock that I purchased, and it had, you know, the three faces. I was like, oh, that's cool. Then I didn't realize that this third one, like, was completely out of focus. <laughs> Like, uh, okay, well, <laughs> I'm just going to have to wing it. So is this flower in the reference photo? Yeah, it is. It's okay. very blurry, but it is. It is. Okay. So totally can be left out, though. You know, if you don't like it, you don't want to do it. That's your choice. You can do more of the purple spiky flowers from the first painting. If you like those, whatever you'd like to do. Short painting. I'm going to go ahead and put in some, just some little leaf, kind of like a fern or something down in here to sort of fill in that space there. Maybe do one up here okay. and this was like a rosebud so I'm gonna go ahead and put in some pink sneaky. I mean, this monster bag of M&M's is right here. <laughs> I know I'll be sorry later, but <laughs> I'm enjoying them now. Now you're enjoying them. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pull down a little bit from the rosebud. I feel like this one's getting a little fussy. I don't know. I'm not liking it that much, but... Once we get our daisies in there, it'll help. So let's put a little bit of blue, a little tiny bit of brown, and create a gray for our daisies. And we're going to do that color first. I'm just going to set the tip of my brush down and pull towards the center and lift. So it's just kind of smushing out and then as I lift it's going to create that petal shape for us. So adding this blue gray will kind of just give our daisies a little bit of something to work against. A little bit of depth shadow. some white now. I'm going to go over it with white.
This one's not my favorite of the three, I have to say. I think I like the first one the best. It's right here. I can hear you. <laughs> you shouldn't say that in front of them. I shouldn't say that in front of it? Okay. Well. Later when we go out and close the door, <laughs> we can talk, we can talk about, about it. which one's your Behind favorite. Behind its back? Yeah. Okay. It's more polite. Mm-hmm. Good, good advice, son. I mean, that's what we do with the kids, right? Right, exactly. We talk about which one's our favorite and all mm-hmm. that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Okay. many daisies in here. What? You? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any such thing as too many flowers? I don't know. Probably not. I did. I hit the microphone. Well, everything's like right here now. It's like literally the microphone's like right there. I'm gonna be able to move. Try not to bend forward too far. Can I hear in the shot? Okay. Okay. So let's put a little bit of the light pink over the top of our rosebud here. I'm going to use this brush to, now we can add our brighter Highlights to our pink rose won't blend in as much. Now it's dry underneath. There we go. I'll brighten it up a little bit. dark pink right in here. Let's add some brighter pink highlights on top of our columbine here. Or whatever this is. Did somebody tell me what it is in the chat? No? Okay. inch angle. Oh. I'm going to add some white to my I 
blue there, maybe a tiny bit of the blue. Like kind of a sage green color. I'm going to go ahead and just add some leaves of this color around. Oh, we got a question. Yeah. So they would like to know, why are some brush handles so long? Is it useful? When would you use it? Well, um, I didn't like those. Sorry, I'm taking them off. Um, the long handles are, are generally for if you're working on canvas that's on an easel. So that it's, you know, you can hold it farther back and, you know, use it. But um, I like the... I like the um, the firmness of those brushes. I had them, I was using them for murals, the ones that I, these 6100 series. I was using the bigger ones for murals. They worked really great. And um, so I got a few more sizes to try them, you know, in the smaller, or, you know, in the, yeah, smaller sizes, you know, the, the rounds and different ones like this. And um, I just really liked them. They're just, they're good um, firmness, um, and I haven't been able to find them in smaller in the short handles, so that's why we use them. I, I would prefer short handles just because you know of the cameras and everything, but uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't really make any difference as far as what I do. They just kind of get in the way a little bit sometimes. Okay, and just add a few little. But you can poke people from further away with them. Right. <laughs> They're handy for that. Mark stays just outside of my reach. That's right. He's just What's the too longest far away. brush? And just outside that. Yeah. <laughs> Check. Yeah. Now I'm just kind of looking, seeing where the movement is, maybe where like there's some open spaces that I don't really want to see so I'm going to just add a few leaves in some of these areas to kind of fill in and adjust maybe make looks like there's something up here in our picture don't know what it is. Maybe we could do another one of our purple flowers over here. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. You know, really just trying to kind of figure out how to finish this painting because it's not quite where I want it to be. I'm not exactly sure what I need to do to get it to where I like it. So I'm just going to fiddle with it a little bit. At this point, if I was like not doing this live and just doing it, you know, for myself, what I would do is stop and set it out in the living room and look at it for a couple of days and then usually I'd be able to see you know oh, I want you know I need more of this color or I need to do something about that or whatever you know whatever it is that uh, I would do to finish it so kind of hmm. is that why you stare at me sometimes bit. in the what? Is that why you stare at me sometimes in the living room? <laughs> mm, how would I finish that? <laughs> For 30 years you haven't been able to figure it out. <laughs> Use some light green hair. Yeah, I don't know, you know. <laughs> kind of give me that 
that sideways look at her eyes like, she's <laughs> still she's not still finished. Like this. <laughs> not finished yet. Maybe I change, <laughs> change the lighting. Maybe that would help. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it is? Open the shades. No, that didn't work. <laughs> close, close them fast. <laughs> close those. You're funny. You're funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is just not my favorite. I don't know what it is about it. Oh, I got some people in chat, though. They're saying it is. It's their favorite. Oh, really? So, yeah. Okay, well, good. So painting, it's okay. People like you. <laughs> Maybe not the mean Angela, but it's okay. Well, I mean, it is. I don't know. I think it's the colors. I'm just not a big yellow person. I don't really like yellow flowers for some reason. I don't really know why, but sorry, yellow flower. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness to the daisies here. That'll give them a little bit of depth and pop those out a little bit better. Just adding it around the bottom here. Maybe add a little bit to my flower there. I don't know what I what do I need to put out here. And do I need another daisy. Uh, hold on. I might do another small mm-hmm. rose. I'm doing the little tongue clicky thing that you do. I know, isn't that funny? It's, it helps. It helps you think. Yeah. Um. I yeah, I, I got nothing. You got nothing? Okay. That was a very dramatic pause for no help at all. Yeah, I wasn't thinking at all about flowers. I was just <laughs> pretending like I was deep in thought. <laughs> Looking at my watch. Yeah. That's long enough. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I don't know. I don't think I want it more pink out there because I don't want to. I like the openness of that area, but I do need something there, so I'll figure it out. I'm going to use my cloth here and wipe off my chalk marks. So, Chad is suggesting Lightly. ivy or ferns. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Let's do that. Maybe a tank. Um, no, I threw that in there. You threw that in there? I'm not surprised. <laughs> that does not surprise me. All right, let's do some more of this little fern here. Yeah, that's cute. Let's do some up here, too. Just using that angle brush, just plopping that brush down and pulling towards the center. Creates those kind of leaf shapes. Okay. I'm going to stop there because I can fill it, the whole thing with this. I'll just put in some streaks on our white base. I'm going to grab some white on the edge of this and I'm going to just put in some lines. Just some highlights of shine. And there is some kind of yellowish rust down here, so we'll go ahead and grab a little bit of my burnt sienna yellow oxide there and add a little bit of that down here I'm gonna add a little bit more white to my yellow yellow rose here tiniest bit of yellow in there with it. I'm 
Okay. Do the same thing with my pink one here. Let's just add a little bit of extra detail to it. You may not need to do this, so just thing about not getting to do chat so I can't really interact with folks. Market stab all the fun. Alright, I am put a little highlight on my thing there. My handle. Alright, I guess I like it a little bit better now. So let's see what it looks like with the other two here. So there's that. I do like that they all have different kinds of flowers. Go ahead and get rid of the side cam there. And uh, I'll see if I can get them all to kind of lay side by side a little bit for us. There we go. Yeah, it's still. So there we go. All right, it's not too bad. Send it with the other two. Okay, I like it better. <laughs> this one's definitely whoa uh oh don't drop it in the paint I, I hit it against my water jar um this one's definitely i think the more loosely painted one of the three it's a little bit looser style and then i got a little bit more realistic as we went along but that's only because it was blurry all right Hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, we need to we need to splatter. Okay, you talk about that while I splatter. I don't want to forget that. That's yeah, favorite, my favorite part. People miss the cowbells during the show, so. Do they? Sorry, but we try not to break it up with those who are watching in the future. Yeah, it was just we we're getting complaints about people saying they were trying to paint and it was distracting uh, them. So. So we had four super chats. Ooh. We had okay. one from Sandy. Jane Holt, and there was no special message, so we say thank you, Sandy. Yes, thank you. And then we also had one from Diana. She says, awesome series. Now, if oh. I could only get my hands on one of those dang red pills, I could join you in the rabbit hole. <laughs> 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 and then we had another donation from Nancy Shapiro. No special message. And same for Susan. So thank you to thank all you. of you for your donations. We really appreciate the support we we, through the super chats. Y'all are the best. And what I was laughing at, I was reading one of the comments on the last videos. Uh huh. This is from Sherelle and says, so beautiful. I can't wait to do this. Sad that I missed the live. I'm such a dork that I actually hollered, yay, stick man, when you busted him out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that is great. So. <laughs> I know. Stickman had to come back by popular demand. Oh, yeah. The way where yeah. People were missing him. So People were getting the pitchforks out. <laughs> they were organizing. Yeah. <laughs> we demand Stickman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sign it. And I want to say thank you guys so much. Give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share it. Share it with all your art friends. Let them know what we're doing here. It helps our channel tremendously. Kind of get the word out and help us to continue to grow and share our love for art and painting with you guys. Sending out free videos into the YouTube verse. <laughs> into the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we thank you guys so much for hel helping us make that possible. And we will see you next time. Tuesday night we'll be back with a... Well, we're doing daisies again. Daisy with the ladybug. And then next Saturday, we will have a uh, figure. We'll be doing a woman in a field of poppies. I'm really looking forward to that one. So be a lot of fun. 
And if you want to see all the other videos we've got coming up, you can just click my name or my photograph after the show, and it'll take you straight to my channel homepage, and you'll see all the kind of videos that we've got uh, available for you. Over 200 and something, I don't know, almost 300 now. So, all right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.